Welcome, and thanks for joining with AIP, the American Institute of Pyramid Research. We study pyramids around the world, especially in Egypt, with the belief they hold special wisdom. Please subscribe to our channel as we uncover long hidden secrets, explain sacred symbols, and demystify the world's greatest mysteries. Well, thanks for coming out and joining us. We're going to be looking at the Alpha and Omegas that are inside the Great Pyramid and outside. So Robert Grant in uh, 2018 found an Alpha and Omega engraved on the coffer in the King's Chamber of the Great Pyramid. This is unbelievable because so many thousands of people have been in there, so many adventurers, so many others, and it's never been found until he found it. So you can see uh, some things he sent me pictures of here. You can show him taking measurements of the Alpha and the Omega. You can see it outlined there where it's on the, uh, uh, the coffer there. So when I went in there in September 2019 with, with the team, I obviously wanted to, uh, to document it. So uh, we went in there. It was exciting to be searching for something that so many people have missed, like hidden in plain sight, as they say. Did you find it? No, I'm looking for it. So here we are. My group's in there. We're filming. You can see the holes from the, from the uh, apparent uh, uh, top to the coffin that's missing here. But we couldn't find it. It's kind of uh, an enigma. So here you're with us at the moment of discovery here. Yeah, I was looking at that too. Oh, oh, that's an A. That's the Alpha. Is that it? Yeah. So, oh, yeah, you know, interesting. Right here. Here it is. It's plainly there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And Robert yeah. Grant thinks it's been there, there too. from the, the beginning. Okay, there's the A right there. There's the Omega right in there. Okay, so incredible. And uh, this moment kind of captures... Uh, the, the special sense we had of uh, rediscovering what someone had discovered. Something that's been overlooked, an Alpha and Omega, in the most holy spot here in the King's Chamber up in the Great Pyramid. Okay, so here's a, a dialogue I had with Robert Grant. He said, it's not mine to find. In other words, uh, he, he realizes as an explorer it's, it's something bigger than him. Uh, and so he, he said, uh, it's chimeric, I fully agree truly from a different dimension, which is the feeling I had when I saw it. So that's, you know, that's kind of the feeling we had when we were looking for it. It's, it's, from some angles you don't see it, from some you do. It's plainly there, though. It's chimeric, okay? And I like his attitude. It's not mine to find. That's the attitude of a, a true, true seeker. The thing is, though, that's not the only Alpha and Omega associated with the Great Pyramid, the one that Robert Grant found and which I documented. When I was looking at some footage of myself on the east side of the Great Pyramid, I discovered the Alpha and the Omega, what I call the AIP Alpha and Omega. Do you see it? Okay, so there it is. And uh, it, it doesn't appear from, it's, again, it's kind of chimeric. It doesn't appear from all angles uh, in different times of day, but it, it's plainly there. Um, so uh, when I showed it to Robert Grant, he goes, oh, OMG, you may be right. And then he drew the, uh, the green... Uh, outlining of it there and the way he is he likes to document everything document everything so he said uh, showing the uh, 360 angles he put on his omega uh, the those uh, serifs come to 137 and 222 degrees and those are the omega serifs and, and he said mine looks to be the same so interesting there's the serifs on the omega there and on mine and both of them seem to be at 137 and 222 degrees you know, on, on the Omega, which is our incredible numbers, if you understand, uh, you know, some, some special constants and stuff that you won't go into in this video. So the Alpha and Omega is there, the AIP Alpha and Omega, but it's chimerical, okay? So, um, and, and by the way, I, I get uh, pictures of the pyramid all the time in my feed because I follow hashtags that relate to the Great Pyramid. So every day I'm looking at the Great Pyramid, and I see it all the time in other people's photos. So this is not something I'm trying to invent. Like, you know, some days more than, more than others it shows up, but not every photo. It's just there. It's interesting. Okay, here's one from John Romer. Now, again, I don't know on the YouTube video how well it's going to come true, but this was a special he did on uh, 60 Minutes, the Australian version. 
And uh, I'm sure he's not even aware of it, but here's this alpha and omega in, in a video by the Egyptologist John Romer. Incredible. But that's not the only alpha and omega in the Great Pyramid. There's a third one. Uh, I was doing research on the scored lines in the descending passage on October 6, 2019. I had special permission inside the pyramid with my team. And uh, that, that first part of the descending passage, by the way, is sometimes called the, uh, the entrance passage. So it's going down but from the outside uh, original entrance on the 19th course, which heads down ultimately to the subterranean chamber. The whole thing's called the descending passage, but uh, again, here I am in it. It's also sometimes called the entrance passage. So we're taking measurements on the scored lines and doing research there. And so watch the clip to see what pops up. So this is a, a partial clip. You can see right so, here. Hold it. Is there? Yeah. This right here, this is a scored line. This is part of the original construction because this has got a smooth face all along. But there it is right there. An alpha and omega. And I didn't even see it when I was studying the scored lines. This came when I got home and was an examining my film footage because, you know, it's dark in there and we only had so much time with our permission, and uh, so there it is, a third alpha and omega, okay? Uh, again, there it is. So uh, the, I think Robert Grant drew that. Or I might have drawn it. I forgot one of us drew that. I asked him to draw one of these. So since I only saw it later, I printed out uh, plates of, of the different pictures and pasted them together to, to kind of see where it is. So it's four inches uh, to the center of it from the scored line, this, those are the scored lines on the uh, east wall of the descending passage, and it's 22 inches from the top corner down to the middle of it, and it's three and a half inches high, two and a half inches wide. So I'm going to study that more the next time uh, I have permission to get in there. But that's not the only alpha and omega. There's this one. Now this one is a derived alpha and omega, and you can see that the outside A there is just formed by the slope sides of, of the Great Pyramid, and then where the two King's Chamber relieving shafts end at the same uh, height on the uh, north and south faces of the Great Pyramid, you just draw a line across there. So that's a natural A that's formed by the uh, formed by the Great Pyramid. And for the Omega, here is a, a circle that I found. If you take uh, the center to be the exact crown of the of the Queen's Chamber. Uh, and and then draw it so it uh, one of the you know the radius would go to the top of the king's chamber. It also touches the junction point where all the passages are: the first ascending passage, the uh, the, the uh, well shaft you know down to the subterranean chamber, the queen's chamber, the grand gallery. They all come together there, and it looks like it touches part of the grotto. So all the major passages in the Great Pyramid are touched base by this omega, and then the seraphs you know go along at the uh, at the ground level there. So an alpha and omega inside the Great Pyramid. Interesting. Okay, this is the end of part one of the alpha and the omega. Uh, we'll, part two will be the next video, but uh, please weigh in on the question I have for you, would you? Thanks. Hey, thanks for coming out to my YouTube channel, uh, AIP Great Pyramid. Uh, I've got a question for you today, and I appreciate if you uh, could take the time to just weigh in down below uh, with a quick answer. Uh, today's video, after I, I made it, was about 15, 16 minutes long, and I thought, you know, that's too long, so I'm going to break it up into two parts. So I've done that with la a couple of videos recently. I, I do part one and part two. Do you like that or not? That's, that's what I'd like to know. Would you rather just have one 15 or 16 minute video, or uh, would it work to, you know, do what I've been doing, kind of divide it up into two eight or nine minute videos? I, I personally like the eight or nine minute size. And so when I see I've gone 15 or 16 minutes, I tend to break it up. But I guess I'd like to hear from you. You know, that's what I think. What do you think? I appreciate it if you weigh in. Thanks. And I think you'd like to join us on the Orion Correlation Theory Tour, April 19th through 25th. It's going to be a small group. We're going to have a spiritual direction. We touch base with all the stars of Orion where they hit the Egyptian soil. And uh, I just think it's something you'd enjoy. So please plan to join us April 19th through 25th. Information below. Thanks.